Well, winter's come in, these leaves are starting to uh, change colour and uh, they'll soon be falling off. Reminder that although we're in autumn, winter is not too far away and of course that means to say that we should get our aerial work done as quickly as possible. Uh, one of my favourite aerials, or my favourite aerial really, is the end fed half wave. Now I've standardised on the 20 metre end fed half wave. I'm just going to explain to you why. If you one or two tips on installing it and how flexible it can be. So uh, let's uh, take a uh, pre-winter look at the 20 metre end fed half wave, which by the way covers 40, 20, 15 and 10 metres. I've been taking my own advice and doing a bit of work in the uh, garden on antennas before winter sets in. I must say the spider pole that I use, which is a fiberglass mast, I've had it for five years. It's still as good as it was when I first bought it, so it's well worth paying a little bit extra for a decent fiberglass pole. On the screen here is your basic end fed half wave, 20 metres long covering 40 metres, 20, 15 and 10 metres. In order to match it you need a 49 to 1 matching transformer. We put this at the fee point on the wire. You can make your own very easily and I'll put a link below this video to a video I did early on making the transformer or you can buy one. The material I recommend is 240-43 mix material and it's worth paying a little bit extra to make sure you get a genuine ferrite core and not one of these sort of you know similar types. Although this is not an absolute test, a quick check you can make on the ferrite material is to put a test meter on it. It should show it to be non-conductive or in other words appear as an open circuit. Now you may wonder why sometimes there is a loading coil just about two meters in from the end uh, of the feed point, just about there. Now the reason for this small coil, which is placed about two meters in from the feed point, is that when you operate an end-fed wire on its harmonics, the harmonic is not exactly related to the fundamental. In other words, if I operate my, or adjust my antenna for seven megahertz, I would expect on 10 meters, the resonance to be at 28 megahertz. Well, it's not. It actually shifts higher. It's probably more like about 28.7 or so, maybe even be a bit higher. If you place a small loading coil in the position near the feed point, as I just uh, mentioned, then it has the effect of reducing the higher frequencies more than the lower frequencies. So it will have virtually no effect at 7 MHz, but at 28 MHz it will actually lower the frequency quite a bit. The net result is that all the frequencies are almost exactly a perfect harmonic relationship to the fundamental. That's the reason for that coil. Now another effect of the transformer itself, which is not often mentioned, is that it actually has a small loading effect on the antenna. An in-fed half wave has got a very high impedance at the feed point and it's very sensitive to anything attached to that feed point. So when you attach the 49 to 1 transformer you actually load it slightly and you'll find that what happens is that in actual fact you need to make that antenna a bit shorter than you'd expect but Always start off with the antenna at, a, at an estimated half wave long and then adjust the length using your VSWR meter and make that adjustment on the fundamental, in other words, the 7 MHz band in this particular case. Now, one of the best things you can do with an end fed half wave that is 20 meters long is to bend it into what is known as a half square antenna. Sorry the measurements on this drawing are not metric but basically the top section is 10 meters and the verticals either end are 5 meters. So in other words you've still got the basic 20 meter long antenna but you've bent it, the, the two ends are dropped down. 
The advantage of this is it gives you some gain on 20 meters. You get three or four dB gain on 20 meters and it still acts as an end fed half wave on the other bands on 40 meters, 15 meters and 10 meters. And there appears to be some gain on 15 meters as well. And on 10 meters, well, it performs as a sort of cross between a vertical and a horizontal antenna. And on 40 meters, it works as a low 40 meter dipole. But the net result is you've got an antenna that fits in a small garden because the total horizontal length is only 10 meters, which will fit into a lot of gardens and the two ends are folded down. Now, normally we fold the ends down to fit them in the garden. Well, we probably do in this case, but this configuration also gives you gain on 20 meters. How clever is that? Now, one important thing that I must mention, and I've done some tests since I erected this half square, is that the point where the coax goes into the transformer, the 49 to one transformer, you must insert a line isolator. And that comprises about five or six turns of the coax cable round one of the ferrite cores, the 240-43 uh, core that I mentioned. That is absolutely essential for correct operation. Believe me, I've done some tests and that is an important part of the antenna in order for it to work correctly. So don't miss that one out. Now I've put a link to my original uh, video on the uh, half square antenna so you can take a look at it. And I also mentioned earlier in this video about the spider poles. Well, we also do spider masks. I use one myself. The spider mast is an alloy telescopic antenna. And the, the, the bottom section is just over, it's just over two inches diameter. I can't remember the exact diameter now, it's metric. But it is really rugged. And I've had one in my garden now for some four years. And it just slides in and out as it did originally. There's no sign of uh, any damage by uh, the weather at all. Check that out on our website, uh, the Spider Mast. It's a good antenna and it's a good way of erecting a mast that telescopes up and down and you can adjust it to whatever height you like. So take a look and you'll see the spec on our website. That's the Spider Mast. As usual, thank you for watching this, uh, this video, much appreciated it, and I hope that you get out in the garden before it's too late and uh, do the aerial work. And don't forget, the, the advantage of the end-fed half wave is you don't need any radials at all. You can support it one end with the house, the other end with a mast down the garden. And likewise, your half square antenna, again, it's very simple to support. Check out my video and Again, it doesn't need any radials. It's a very simple antenna. Take a look. It's worth a look. And the results that I'm, I'm hearing about are really good. I mean, everybody I think now that's tried an infrared half wave has been convinced that it does work. And those that have tried this half square have also been very impressed. I think you might be as well. In the meantime, enjoy your ham radio. You take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.